Edmonton Sports. Uh, we are excited today because not only are we going to be starting our eight-part special on the NFL upcoming season, we have brought on a new fucking moron like these other two guys, I guess, would be the best way to explain Tony. He'll fit right in with these fucking <laughs> retards down here. Bunch of degenerates. But, uh, this is a good <laughs> – yeah, these fucking degenerates. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so we have uh, brought on Tony for the NFL season. Uh, we're going to probably be doing two podcasts now a week. Um, what we'll go ahead and do is uh, continue with me, Mike, and Matt as far as uh, outside of the NFL. We'll be doing that probably in the middle of the week. And then uh, on the weekend, we will be doing uh, the NFL. Once the NFL season starts, we're going to be uh, probably recording – uh, probably after the Monday night game. So we'll be dropping uh, everything that happened over the weekend on Tuesdays. Um, and then uh, we'll be continuing very heavily into the MLB season as we're going to be starting the second half on that. We've got a special of MLB coming up. Uh, we're going to do an all-star break special, kind of uh, give our uh, half year round uh, awards and things like that. So um, with that said, guys, we are starting today with what we all agreed upon was the weakest division, uh, NFC South. Um, I, I, I kind of want to start really with the quarterbacks in that division. You guys, as this is easily that all I, I even out, I would say actually outside of Derek Carr, I'd say that the three teams definitely have huge question marks come, come qu quarterback. So uh, obviously uh, the Panthers gave up a shit ton for Bryce Young. Uh, I would definitely want to get your guys insight on that first. Uh, do you guys think the Panthers gave up too much? Um, it, Matt, Tony, Mike, it doesn't matter whichever one you guys want to start first, but uh, what do you guys think? Too much? I, I think I think to get up to the number one spot, and if you're going after what you feel is going to be your franchise quarterback moving forward, it's going to take a haul like that. Um, you can reference what the Niners gave up to, to move up, and they didn't move all the way up to number one. Um, what was it? Mm -hmm. I think they moved up to number three, if I remember right, to get uh, Trey Lance. So it, it just shows to move up that high for what you believe is going to be your franchise quarterback, you're going to have to give up a lot. And it sucks because it's going to take away picks from what you can build around. Um, they ended up giving not just their first round pick this year. You know, they swapped pick number one for pick number nine, but they also gave up their second round this year. They gave up a first next year, a second round next year, and DJ Moore for one pick. Yeah, And I, yeah. I don't understand the DJ Moore part because – you're you're giving your best wide receiver. You're bringing in this young quarterback. <clears throat> you're giving away your best wide receiver. Now they did sign Adam Thielen, but I would much rather have DJ more than Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen is on the back end of his career. He's not a true yep. number one anymore, and you're relying on him to help out this young quarterback. Uh, personally, I see nothing but failures for the Panthers. Uh, they have no weapons outside. Um, Hayden Hurst is nothing special at tight end. Um, now they did bring in Miles Sanders. Uh, you know, so I, you yeah. know, but the problem is with Miles my, my Sanders obviously has been his injury history. You know, he gets well, it's hurt. Not, it's it's going to go to trouble. Just that it, you have you have Bryce Young coming in to a fresh team where they got Frank Reich coming in, and they also got a new offensive coordinator who who's from the Rams that likes to run the ball. Well, I mean, you would think he likes to run the ball because he has a running back history in coaching, but. Look at what he did with the Rams over the past few years. That whole debacle with Cam Akers. I was talking to Matt about this. It, it, they didn't go anywhere. And so the fact that Miles Sanders, you would think it's upgrade at running back, but Bryce Young likes to be a mo mobile at some times. He can't, he, he holds on to the first read too long. And if he, can, he can't get past that read, he has to get creative. And that's where he tries to get mobile. So are they going to be a mobile running back team? Are they going to, are, are a mobile quarterback team or a running back team? I don't think they've made that decision yet. And I think they, I think they paid too much for Miles Sanders. I think he peaked. But well, peaked. I think the only thing that helps um, Bryce Young, I, honestly, for me, if I'm going to trade up that high, uh, it wouldn't have been Bryce Young. It would be CJ Stroud for me. Um, yeah, that's just the way. I, I a lot of people had higher, more, more higher grades on CJ Stroud than they did Bryce Young. But it, it just depended on the organization. I guess the Panthers felt that Bryce Young was a quarterback for them. And I mean, they got rid of um, Matt Rule, fired him, the head coach. Ben McAdoo was released. Um, I mean, Frank Wright, he, he, he comes from that um, that Philadelphia team that made it to the Super Bowl and with Doug Peterson now in Jacksonville. And I, I like that as a head coach. That's going to help him a lot. But I don't know if I see him as a as an elite quarterback in the league. I mean, maybe keep the franchise afloat. 
like Scott said, he don't have the weapons on the outside to mm-hmm. to help him out, and they got rid of his number one weapon and DJ Moore. And I, I like the Thomas Brown hire for the offensive coordinator. I mean, he's from that Sean McVay tree. You know, they like to get those running backs involved. I mean, I don't know if Miles Sanders is going to stay healthy this year. That that's his only downfall is you know he gets nicked up a lot. That's that's his mo. And he just happened to stay healthy in the contract year last year, and he got paid this year. So we'll wait to see about that. Yeah, but, we're I mean, that works, all the pieces huh? are in place. Yeah, all the pieces are in place there from the coaching staff. It's just to see how much Bryce Young can soak it all in and, and take it from there. But to me, I, I don't see much for his rookie season with the weapons he has. I don't see much for it to be for him to be yeah. doing much in the NFL. It's, it's yeah, really and, and the other thing yeah. too, going back to them getting rid of DJ Moore, you took also not only your top. Uh, receiver, but you took a young receiver as well. Somebody that could have yeah. been there for a long time frame, you know, with him and, and they build out that, that rapport together, you know, that, that chemistry. Now you got Adam Thielen, who's got what three years left, maybe max. Damn. No, I think he's, he's DJ, already on the decline. DJ Moore. Well, yeah, that's as, what I'm saying. He's, he's already yeah. on his, he's already on his down. He's on his last that's what I'm saying. I mean, a, a maximum of what, three years. Well, yeah. You, you you see you see Thielen as the number he's the number one now obviously and he's not yeah, he's yeah and he's not yeah. so he'd I mean you got, you got Terrence Marshall who at best there, on who, any other team most likely a number three yeah uh, yeah exactly I think but he's also going to give him that veteran sense and so he'll yeah. do his best to help Bryce Young I don't think he's going to be he's yeah. definitely not the key to Bryce and, Young's success they got DJ Chark from um from the Lions um, yeah, I, I mean don't I don't know how that's going to happen or how that's going to work in. <laughs> Um, Jonathan Mingle through the draft. I mean, who knows how this this pass game is gonna develop? But yeah. I don't see it going very far. They like, I mean, DJ Moore. What is it? He had four straight years to start his NFL career with over 11, 1,100 yards receiving. I mean, that's that's hard to do, man. Well, and, not even and that. he was with this team doing that with this team. Yeah, with, the thing about the quarterback, quarterback play. The uh, years. Yeah, it was Cam. Was a Cam Newton, Baker uh, Mayfield, and and Sam Darnold, and Sam Darnold. it's just. He had all these these bridge quarterbacks that weren't. I mean, Cam Newton was at the end of his career. He's not. He wasn't the Cam Newton of, you know, 2015, 16. But that was well, a I have a question. I have receiver. a question for everybody. So, assuming the trade didn't happen, right? Assuming trade didn't happen, Bear. Mm-hmm. We know the Bears weren't paying a quarterback. They're they they would have. I don't know, picked up defense or something, or maybe yeah. a wide made a wide receiver. Do you think the Texans would have taken Young over Shroud, or they would have stick with Shroud? Oh, that's a good question. See, it's hard to di- dictate that type of yeah. stuff too. You know, going back to like what yeah, Matt said stuff. as far as the yeah. way you know taking the taking Stroud over using. Young, it's all well. Yeah, yeah it, you have to remember it also comes down to interviews. Some guys yeah. can interview better than other guys. Uh, maybe maybe Young understands movement a little bit more because there it is a little bit different. You know, it could have been you know going over tape. You know how how someone studies. Um, maybe some things that they saw mm-hmm. on tape in college that they felt was going to come, you know, it's more than just an arm. Uh, maybe it's the way they wanted to run the offense. For yeah, the, I was for just going to say, what years. what quarter, um, what quarterback so, I mean, is more a, capable of blending in with that type of uh, offensive mm-hmm. coordinator scheme? Yeah, yeah. True. You know, you want if, if your yeah. if your offense is built around having a, a potential mobile quarterback versus a pocket passer, you know, you got to look at that. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I want to kind of go down a little bit into uh, predictions as factors. Um, I, do, I do want to talk some points on uh, their schedule. So um, they don't have a very – they the fifth easiest schedule uh, going into the season. Uh, even with that said, um, I actually have the Panthers going 4-13. and 13. I, I, I don't think they're going to mm-hmm. win many games. I just don't think that offense can, can keep up with – other high scoring now look at and and, and you think about it th- this is this is like the beginning of the year okay so they got falcons week one actually had them winning that game right but then they have the saints yeah. seahawks vikings lions dolphins and then they go into easily be one and five going into the bye or zero oh and six it's it's yeah are you yep. going to tell me that that offense can keep up with with at least, like maybe they could keep up with the Falcons, but they are not keeping up with the other five yeah. teams. So all yeah. those five teams could be playoff teams, you know. So they have that, but they're going to play a lot of really good offensive teams. I mean, you think about it. Going out of that week ten against the Bears, they're going to be much better offensively. At the Cowboys week eleven, 
Uh, you're gonna play the Bucks twice in this in your second half. You play the Saints again. They, they're gonna they 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 are gonna have to put up some. I don't see where that's gonna come from. So I have the I have going four and thirteen. What 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 do you guys have them at? Well, you guys kind of see the same thing I do. You guys see them maybe being a little bit better. Maybe Bryce Young does well. What do you guys think? I got them at six and eleven. Um, yes. like like you said that. That strength of schedule is it's pretty tough. I mean, they have a they have a long road, you know, to travel. Um, I got them at six and eleven, and I mean, like you said, I I have them beating at, at least <laughs> at least Tampa once, maybe you know that that quarterback situation over there. So I think they can get a couple wins in that division and sneak out a couple out of the division. Maybe get six wins. I'll give them the credit. Yeah, I think I, I think out. they split. I think they split games with the Falcons and the uh, and the Bucks, and then they'll lose both games to okay. the Saints. Yeah, I see them both losing both to the Saints, but yeah. I, I see them beating both the Falcons twice. I, I and the Bucks they split with the Bucks, but I also Falcons agree with nice. Matt. Yeah, I, I just I feel like they're both are young teams. Well, it's outside Adam Thielen, but the Falcons are young right now. I was reading yeah. their ages; they're young, so they may be just as inexperienced as the yeah. as the Panthers. So it gets it's a toss up, right? But I have I have the Panthers simply because of Frank Reich. I, I think he came into the Colts. Last uh, the past few years from 20, like 2020 to 2021, 2022. No, I don't remember, but he came into the Colts and took him playoffs twice. Um, so I, I feel like Frank Reich is the reason they're going to beat the Falcons twice. I don't think he's going to take him to the playoffs, but he's yeah. going to try to change that team. Now, here, and, here's going to be a, here's going to be another thing to watch it with the uh, the Panthers. All eight of their defensive coaches are new to the team. Yeah, that's true. All eight of them. Um, you have six of the eight have no professional coaching experience. Uh, they brought in. Oh, that's going to be a big. That's going to be a big yep. deal. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That, that's so one of the things that I have written down as their new defensive coordinator. I didn't. They, even have they gave up in, in that division. In that division, they gave up the second most points behind the Falcons. Falcons allowed 386. Panthers gave up 374 points. Um. You got they brought in D'Angelo Hall. He's going to be the def- the the DBs coach. Uh, Dom Capers is a senior defensive assistant. Um, you have a brand new secondary and quarterbacks coach. Uh, he was the last three seasons he was with the Rams, so this is his first year with Carolina. Uh, Todd Wash, he's the defensive line coach. It's first year with Carolina. He played. He was the uh, D line coach the last two seasons in Detroit, and before that, he had eight years with Jacksonville. Um, 16 through 20, he was a defensive coordinator there. So, I mean, and then they also have a first year um, outside linebackers coach with uh, with uh, Denver last year, but he's got eight years with with college. Now, there's a big difference between college play and NFL play. So, mm-hmm. hey, that's going to be something that's going to be huge to watch. If that defense is not going to be able to stop anybody, that offense is going to have to put points up, and I don't think they're going to be able to. I like their defensive corner they picked up from Denver though. That 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 right there solidifies the defense. What is the name? Eli Elijah Ezero. Yeah. Ezero. Ezero. That that Denver defense, he was there for what three, four years. Um mm-hmm. that Denver defense was what ranked seventh in defense, only allowed like 320 yards per game. Uh their pass defense was ranked number four in the NFL. Their rush defense ranked 10. Like that defense had a lot of good studs on it, but I mean, they have J.C. Horn at cornerback. Um, they just need a little bit more cornerback help with Tua, with J.C. Horn. and uh, Yeah, Deon- but they also Deon- drafted Johnson. Von Bell. That's a big pickup in the free agency. Oh, no, the free agency. Yeah, they picked him up free agency. That's going to help. Yeah, it's but definitely I, help. They have a lot of pieces. It's just they have to put it together. It's going to yeah. take more than one year. I can I see them coming out in 2024. Yeah. yeah. I and like I, actually have, I actually have a sleeper for this draft. We're talking about the Miles Sanders. I have – they lost Dante Foreman in free agency to um, Chicago. That's a big piece. I mean, Deontay Foreman came back from the Achilles injury, what, about four or five years ago? It takes a while for that Achilles to even come back to full health, if it even does come back to full health. I mean, we've seen it with Cam Makers. That that injury is not, you know, to, something to tread lightly with. It takes two years, so yeah. minimum. And now Chuba Harbin back there, I mean, he was ranked 22nd out of the 60 qualified for on PFF folk, P, Pro Football Focus, and Miles Sanders was ranked 42nd out of 60, so... I understand Chubba Hubbard had a little bit less carries. Uh, I'd say it was 47 less carries, but I think if Miles Sanders getting nicked up, I mean, I think I could see Chubba Hubbard going out there to carry some of the load. And who knows, maybe eating to Sanders' Sanders's, um, carries. Because in 
Philadelphia, they didn't see him as a bell cow back. They, they may split, split, in they time may split with, from the get go. Yeah, yeah. I, I see Miles Sanders' situation doesn't change. He's gonna be. Yeah. Uh, he's gonna be the the. If you could, I would even call it. Yeah, a he was always splitting and yeah, 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 Sanders, like, Hubbard, but now you have Young. Young is not gonna just stand in the pocket the whole time. Yeah, he's a little bit mobile. Yeah, yeah he's a little bit mobile. He's more yeah. mobile than most, yeah. right? And so, yeah. so that's that takes away. And that's why I disagree a little bit with your Hubbard prediction, Matt. I, I kind of he will go up a little bit. At first, I thought Hubbard was gonna go up a lot. Then they got Sanders and brought Hubbard down a little bit, and then they got Young yeah. and down a little bit more. But I, I don't, Sanders well, is not going to get two hundred and fifty touches. It's not. No, I agree. No, that's he, not happening. He peaked last year. He peaked. No, no. I see Hubbard getting about 100, 120 well, uh, touches. And think of, think about this: if if they can't throw, they're just going to stack the box. Young's not going to be able to run. Sanders isn't going to be able to run. Hubbard isn't going to be able to run mm -hmm. if they can't throw the ball. That uh, let's say let's say Thielen goes down because Thielen has had an injury history the last few years as well. What happens yeah. when the if Thielen goes down? Who are they throwing the ball to after that? Terrence Marshall? Yeah. yeah. Like LaVisca Chanel. What what, <laughs> what 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 number one corner can't lock up any of those guys like no problem? Quick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like, agree. I agree. It, they're they're gonna be a shit it's gonna be it, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be a yeah, it, it is. It's gonna be, you know, I totally agree with you, Tony. It's it's gonna be crap. But um, I think we have uh, the bottom of the barrel for this division here, and I, I think we can move on. We all agree uh, Carolina has a lot yeah, of work to go. Yeah, and they'll I wish them the division. But, yep, absolutely. So we're going to move on now to Bucks, the two back-to-back -back, uh, divisional winning Bucks here. But obviously Brady is gone, um, and they lost more than just their quarterback. They lost the leader of that team. You know, they, they, they a lot goes what? when Brady leaves. Yeah, and yeah. um, yeah. if you think you're replacing Tom Brady with Baker Mayfield or Kyle man. Trask, what the <laughs> fuck are you thinking? No, it, it's yeah. gonna. I, I feel bad because they have really they have two really good wide receivers and Evans and Godwin, and you yeah. know, from a fantasy standpoint, I know this isn't a fantasy podcast from fantasy. That it's going to be awful. Um, the the stuff that have have you guys seen some of the videos on Mayfield? How bad he is? Just yeah, throwing like, behind receivers. I, I call him. him the interception king. Like yeah. that guy. That guy. I would, I would not touch him with ten foot pole. <laughs> yeah, and, and the Bucks and, don't have a it sucks because and it sucks because he beat the Raiders, and I they, we sucked. But I it, it is what it is. The Raiders <laughs> yeah. couldn't beat him. They so, sucked. The Bucks actually have the toughest uh, schedule. Schedule, um, it's it's the twenty second. Um, I mean, it's still a bottom ten as as far as like they don't have a tough schedule. You know what I mean? It's 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 not that bad. I'd 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 be happy if the 49ers had that type of schedule. Um, <laughs> but me personally, I have them going seven and ten. I have them going seven and ten. Um, I just think quarterback play is going to be the reason that they're not going to succeed i think mm -hmm. they i think they have the roster to win games but this is going to come down to another shitty quarterback situation and i just don't think they have the quarterback in that locker room to win them games if you were down a touchdown and you had baker midfield or kyle trask driving you down the field like are you are you are you confident Fuck no i'm not confident absolutely not be confident if I needed just a field goal. So um moving on, you know, we'll start with you, Tony. We started with Matt last time. We'll start with you, Tony. What do you think about the Bucks this year? Uh, going I, forward? I think the Bucks. I, I was close, close to what you predict this guy. I, I, I actually had them staying the same at eight and nine, like they did this year uh, or last year. Uh, I, I don't see them coming out on top whatsoever. Um, they're going to be better than the Panthers, that's for sure. But that's because they have slightly experienced team. Um, I think the biggest aspect to the whole team that made me feel like they're going to stay the same is that they kept their defense, their top three defensive players. Uh, I mean, they kept they kept uh, Jamal Dean, Anthony Nelson, and Levante David, and they, and then they went heavy defense in the draft. So I think that they're going to be mid tier still. I don't think they're going to be anything special. 
But Baker Mayfield himself is a shit show. They got a new offensive coordinator in Dave Canales. And I, I don't I don't know. I he resurrected know Geno Smith's career. Yeah, he resurrected Geno Smith's career. Yeah. But he, he ain't resurrected Baker Mayfield's career. Geno Smith was never Baker Mayfield. <laughs> like, Geno Smith was just there. He was just there, and he was kind of yeah. just a backup. Baker Mayfield just, like, completely crashed. Um, Geno Smith ain't right yeah, back yet. So I, I think they're going to be the same by 8-9. 8-9 nine. <laughs> nine is what I predict. 8-9. Okay. Matt? Uh, I have them at seven and ten to go. Uh, as, same thing as Scott. Seven that a baby. That a baby. They have. You know what's up. Nah, it's, that's. <laughs> they have the <laughs> offense, man. Um, like like Tony said, they re- re-signed some key defensive players over there. Um, they lost what Leonard Fournette, and they lost a few pieces on the offense, man. Um, Julio wasn't himself. They lost him. I mean, he's a shadow of Julio Jones. Uh, Cameron Bray gone. Um. But I, I see this offense can compete. I, the run game, that's the only thing that's questions me. I, I have questions about is Ken Ricard White. He's going to get the volume. Is it going to be suffi- like sufficient enough volume to where, like, like it could be the same thing like with uh, Miles Sanders of Carolina. Is he just going to run into a brick wall after two and a half yards? You know, and they're going to stop the box. Because, I don't know, Mike Evans looked like he lost it last year. I, I don't know what was going on with that. Every six games, he'll have a 100-yard receiving game. It was just a weird thing. They still have Chris Godwin in the inside, Russell Gage. Um, I like their offensive pieces, but it's just do they have the quarterback to get it to these pieces? That's the thing. And I don't think Kyle Trask or Baker Baker Mayfield are the answer. And for that, I I gave him seven wins. I was going to go six and 11 just like the Panthers, but I just gave him the benefit of the doubt and went with the seven. Maybe that um, Todd Bowles can coach his way to maybe a few more wins and and we hope. Yeah. Now, now Godwin did put up uh, last year his uh, career high in receptions at 104, and I actually yeah, think know. he's gonna. Yeah, and that's because Mike Evans benefit. didn't do crap. Yeah. Yeah, and and if you watched Mike Evans and Tom Brady, whatever the long ball wasn't connecting. That's always been uh, Mike Evans' bread and butter is is the deep threat. Um, it, it just seemed like last year, for whatever reason, him and Brady couldn't get on the same page till about the second half of the season, uh, started getting going a little bit. Um, but I Mayfield is not a great thrower downfield. He's not very accurate no. on, on the deep threat. And that's going to really, really hurt Evan. And if you can't stretch the field, and like you said, you don't know what's going to happen with Mike or out of the backfield. How is that run game going to be? Um, again, if you mm-hmm. don't have that threat, that if you feel he's like they get can't the throw the ball against you, yeah, he's going to he get catches is, too but, out of the backfield as well. Is it yeah, going to be? But the problem, good touches, yeah, 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 yeah. No, exactly. And 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 if he can't get the one, like if, if he's only getting like three, three and a half a carry, and you're mm-hmm. constantly self in that skin and seven or maybe second and eight situation, you don't have the quarterback play anymore to, to, to get you out of that. And they're not going to – you got to remember, Brady was, even at his age, this guy, it was nothing for him to have 45, 50 attempts in a game. Mm-hmm. You, you can't yeah. ask that of, of Mayfield or, or – or, and, in fact, we don't even know what we have in Kyle Trask. I mean, we're yeah. over here – I mean, I'm bad-mouthing him, but Kyle Trask, maybe he's decent. But the fact that they – they knew what they had as far as like they've seen him the last couple of years and practice and all that. And the fact that you felt comfortable bringing in Mayfield to compete for that starting job, I guess kind of does tell me everything I need to know as far as the confidence that they have in Kyle Trask. So um, Mike, you're, you're last up right here. What do you, what do you, the bucks, are you kind of on the same page as us or what you got going on? Yeah. Same, same page there. Um, eight and nine. I actually think they regress from that and um, I, I'm probably put them right around that seven and 10. Um, their, their offense again, same thing. Just repeating what you guys have said, the quarterback is going to be the huge question mark there. Their defense is going to be possibly their only saving grace to keep them in games. But like you said, how confident are you going to be in your quarterback? Um, if you get a, if you need a late game drive to field goal or touchdown to win the game. Now, no. the other thing too, turnovers, you got, none of you guys mentioned turnovers. Mm-hmm. Baker Mayfield is known for a lot of turnovers. Yeah. Interception King. Yep. If you throw in the ball to Mike yeah, Evans, no, God, it don't matter. You're interception King. Yeah. And one of those quarter or one of those receivers is going to get pissed if they're not getting the ball. Oh, they're yeah. going to be so used to what how they had it the last few years. 
Um, and and even you know what? Even going back before Tom Brady, Jameis Winston, yeah, he threw the he th- threw a lot of turnovers, but he also got a lot of a lot of yards. Yeah, that's why I see Mike Evans not. I don't. I'm well, not he kind of had to. I mean, yeah, I'm not concerned with Mike Evans re- regressing, um, only because he was still able to put over a thousand yards every season with Jameis Winston at the helm. Eight, conse- eight consecutive years. Yeah, thousand yards. Nine. So. Nine. nine. Oh, I forgot. I didn't count this year. Nine. nine. He's right. the yeah, first, nine. He, he's, a, he's the first player in NFL history to start his career with nine consecutive nine thousand. You know, yeah. the nine consecutive thousand yard seasons. Are you worried about the great feat? No, I know. Oh, it's it's done. Uh, I think it, I honestly yeah. think it's done because even even last year they they struggled to get it done with Tom Brady as yeah. far as the way that went. Um, now. Like the offensive line was banged up last year, and, and Tom Brady was he had to really mm-hmm. be quick on 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 so they didn't he didn't always have the opportunity of, of being able to step back, sit for a second, and let Evans get downfield. Um now hopefully this offensive line stays healthy this and you know maybe maybe Mayfield or Trask doesn't have that issue where they're constantly under distress. I mean, Tom Brady is the slowest guy to ever play football, so he definitely wasn't escaping any pressure. Now, yeah. Baker Mayfield can move. He can move a little bit, so he he can escape. And and one of the things they did say that they do want to run, and, and this is something they couldn't do too much with Brady, is they do want to they want to use um, the bootleg much more this year. They, they want to run some bootlegs. Um, they said that they want to use a lot of misdirection. They want to do uh, right wide run zones, uh, um, a lot of play action. So we're, we're going to see how this offense ends up turning out. It, it could be, it, this could end up being a great offense. Or it could have been, or it could end up being a bottom 10 offense. You know, yeah. it's, it's so crazy because this is such a hard situation to, to really digest yeah. because you're just like, ah, man, like what the fuck if, is going to go on? It with feels Baker? like they're rebuilding. Like it's yeah. like a rebuild mode. It's like a, it's but not, not a, full a full rebuild. I think it's a semi down. rebuild. I would that's like, semi. yeah, because they still have their Evans and Godwin are still there, and you know, a couple good pieces. But well, it feels yeah, like see this when when you when you when you listen to Baker Mayfield talk, like in interviews lately, he's talking about he's revitalized, like he's trying to go up from here. Like he accepted hitting rock bottom, and he really felt it. Do you believe him? Do you think he's going to try to be better this year than he was not anywhere else? And Browns, Rams, everywhere. I don't is that going to make him make different decisions on the field? Because yeah. that's, that's the guy, problem. That's the thing. It's, that's, it's, are you are you, all of a sudden you can magically read a defense better? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But to his, <laughs> to his point, he, this is the best weapons he's had anywhere yeah. he's been, whether it's Cleveland. Yeah. The Rams, yeah, he had a cut, but he was hurt. He, he only played, well, four or five games in, with the Rams. So this is the best option. If, had you, had to pick, if you had to pick their starting quarterback right now, who are you chasing, Mayfield? Baker Mayfield. I'm, yeah. I'm going with the guy with the experience is going to be May- Mayfield. Yep, Mayfield. I can, oh, yeah. 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 We're all now here's a little here. here's a little situation. Okay, Matt, we were talking about this the other day about Kirk Cousins. Now you were saying that you thought you know he's going to go to the 49ers and all that, and obviously we yeah, have that division coming Ooh. now. Uh-huh. Could Tampa Bay? Yeah, we call Jimmy G. We'll get to that later. Could Tampa Bay? Now I know next year they have no. They're, they're going to be hurting on the salary cap. Like they don't have any salary cap. Can they somehow make magic happen and maybe they make a run for Kirk Cousins? Mm, Who uh, would fit? He would fit with that offense. He would fit with he, that offense. He would, but I don't think – I don't know. I don't, I don't see Kirk Cousins going to another team to rebuild. He's trying to win a championship. I don't see that happening. But they yeah. wouldn't be rebuilding. Think about it. Think about it. Next year – But Mike Evans is going to be 32. Gonna be- He's on the way out. Uh, I mean – It would be their last chance before the full-on rebuild. No. Okay. Yeah, but this say well, Mike say Evans next, is a free agent next year. Draft so. a wide receiver. Yeah, but what if they draft yeah. another wide receiver? I mean, it depends who they get. Don't yeah, I, honestly though, I honestly yeah. i i so, think I think he stays with Vikings. I don't. I think they re-sign him. He has too much rapport with Jeff. Justin that's Jefferson. kind of what I was telling Matt. Yeah, he stays. There's no way he doesn't. I mean, he's he. Uh, we'll talk about him when we get to. Yeah. No, I was just hearing a lot of beat reporters that yeah. there's nothing he can do unless they make it to the Super Bowl for him to stay there. There, the temperature in the organization in Minnesota is Kirk Cousins isn't the the answer in Minnesota. I was yeah, just reading yeah. a lot of. Could have told reporters. you that before you gave him all that guaranteed money. 
fucking don't gotta yeah. be a beat report. That's a story for when we get to the person to know. Yeah, when we when we get see north. Division, we'll it's get a story more for another day. Okay. <laughs> so so we're all in agreement Ed Bucks are gonna end up being, you know, on uh, on the losing end as far as uh five hundred. Yeah, no division uh, winners. Around yeah. seven, eight, yeah. 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 seven, eight wins. So um, now we move on to the Falcons, who have the 32nd strength of schedule. So for them, good for them. Um, I got them slayed uh, actually, at eight and nine. I what actually think this is a team. I, I think this is a team to watch out for with the uh... Bijan Robinson. <laughs> Yeah, you are so far on his nuts. Um, <laughs> your favorite human. I'm not, I'm surprised you're not wearing his jersey already. Hey, don't you worry. Or did they tell you it was back? Surprised you're not wearing his fucking jog strap on your head. Hey, you guys just watch. You guys are like, he hasn't taken a snap in the NFL. Ezekiel Elliott. I mean, these guys, trust me, Bijan is going to be a hit. Don't you guys worry. But oh, I don't into his ACL. All right, all right. But no, I think. Uh, I, think <laughs> I, don't I don't know this guy. I don't know this guy. Uh, bad show. juju, bad juju. <laughs> fucking guy off the show, man. <laughs> I, I I think uh, that I think the Falcons actually are going to be one of the uh, uh, up and coming teams in in that division with the mm-hmm. moves that they've made over the last couple of years. Oh yeah. Um, they're doing they're doing everything right. It seems like they're doing it slow. It's going to take a couple years, but they're they're getting the right pieces at the right time. So you've got. Desmond Ritter, you got a young quarterback. Now you got a young running back in in Bijan. You got Drake London, who's going to be, I believe, an absolute beast. You know, in another two years, that's going to be a team really to watch. And I think that they're going to be competitive for the division. Maybe not this year, but I, I think next year for sure they're going to compete for the division. Wholeheartedly agree with everything you just said, man. I was gonna say, I think right now they're gonna be so, the worst in the division only because they're so young. No, they won't be the worst. No, in the division. That's gonna, they'll that's be competing gonna for the division. Carolina, I think I see between them, them and Carolina, yeah. but I think that the only reason I say that is because of what you did. They're, well, they're young, but they have the potential to grow, like to just blow up in this division. Mm-hmm. No, okay, look, I'm gonna let me let me jump on on this. I have no confidence in Ritter after watching him last year. Okay. Four games. Four games. He threw two touchdown passes. Now, he didn't throw a pick, okay, but he didn't throw for a whole lot of yards. But those two touchdowns came in the last season against the Bucks, who were resting players because they had already locked up the division. Okay? Look at In four games, 708 yards, 6.2 yards a completion, two touchdowns, no interceptions, 86.4 uh, quarterback rating completion percentage at 63.5 in today's NFL you you cannot throw for you can't throw the ball like that and compete yeah, the, the they Bears scored the most the same they Bears, scored the most points of the four teams in their division yeah I don't give a shit what they did what was their record <laughs> with all those fucking points yeah because their defense couldn't it, stop it, anybody they give it the most points in their, de- in their uh, de- most, most there were seven and ten yeah, they're seven and ten. They're, I, I have I have them finishing at eight and nine yeah. as well, Mike. So I think now I think Scott. They, I don't disagree with what you're saying, Scott, but I think Desmond Ritter needs more time to. Yeah, know, that's. Gain I didn't say they were going to compete for the division this yeah, year. I said they're a couple of years. They are rebuilding and they're doing it piece by piece. I, so just, I don't disagree with you, Scott, but I just give them time. Yeah. I, I have them. No, but there's another. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Matt. You're good. Go no, I have them. Not oh, I have them it? competing. I'm gonna just say I have them going competing and giving the the Saints a run for their money. I'm, I have them eight and nine, the Falcons, with Arthur yeah, Smith. Really look, check, yeah, check this stat out. Look at this, Arthur Smith, since becoming the head coach in 2021, they're averaging 74.5 rushing yards a game. In one year, he turned it around, and they resulted in 106 rushing yards a game, the most. Percentage gain since 2001 by any team. Was that 30, basically a 30 yard per game increase? Uh huh. One thing that he's going to do is going to run the ball. He's going to run the ball, run the ball, run the fucking ball again. That's what he does. Yes, it sucks for Kyle Pitts. It's going to suck for Drake London, but this guy is, that's, that's what he's going to do. Run the ball and keep, keep his defense off the field because he knows that defense is not there yet. I mean, they got the defensive coordinator from New Orleans, what, Ryan Nelson, 
I think you could turn that unit around, but it's not going to turn around in one year. Um, it might take a year or two, maybe two, three years, give or take. Yeah, but if you're, counting, more talent, if you're yeah. counting the ball down Bijan with with Bijan Robinson like over and over again, and it takes him three years to just get out. Like you used Bijan Robinson, you you run through him. You can't do that to somebody his caliber. Like he should have gone to a team that was ready to win now. And I don't think the Falcons are there yet. They're getting there, but I, I just I feel bad that Bijan went there because he doesn't. He, like you said, they're gonna run, 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 run it down people's throats, and he's gonna get used and abused. And then by the time they actually become a, a, a playoff caliber, I'm not gonna say Super Bowl, but playoff caliber team, Bijan's gonna be tired. Yeah, anything's possible in this well, division, man. Don't yeah, forget about Algier. Algier, Algier, yeah. Algier got over Algier's a thousand yards last year. Yeah. yeah, he got over he, a thousand he, yards. He ran at over five yards a carry. Uh -huh. Four point nine. He, 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 yeah, they don't they don't have to have Bijan come in. Bijan, like I understand he's your number eight pick. They probably want to fucking use and abuse him, like what you're saying, Tony. But really, they don't necessarily have to. They can give Al Jair some some work, yeah. and I think it'll be okay. But the problem what if what if th those stats that I read you as far as Ritter, you know, he threw for under 200 yards a game. Um let, let's let's so just Mar say so did Mariota. He actually threw for more yards yeah. than Mariota per game. Yeah, yeah. the The way that they always moved the ball was was running, and I was really surprised that they didn't stack the. Ball. So now they brought in Bijan, and everyone knows I pound the rock with Bijan. So if I'm a defensive coordinator, I'm gonna see what you have in Ritter, and I'm gonna stack the shit out of that ball. I have don't give a shit how gone is. I am going to put so much pressure on Ritter to beat me through the air because outside, if you can lock down um, Drake London, that pretty much just Al Pitts only who did have injury histories last year. Now, hopefully that's all behind him. But again, this is another team where if they were to lose uh, Kyle Pitts or uh, um, Drake London for, you know, a number of games, you're in trouble. Again, you yeah. are in trouble because you don't have the depth behind these guys the the, the help. So yeah, in problem. my eyes, I'm I'm thinking is if I am a defensive coordinator week one, oh dude, I'm gonna have so many guys, I might even leave a fucking wide receiver wide open without a corner <laughs> on them. That's how much I'm stacking the but they, they, they did the same thing one they play, week one they play Carolina. Yeah, they're yes. gonna run all over Carolina. <laughs> Week two is Green Bay. Actually, week three, actually, week three I, is Detroit. I actually have Carolina winning. That's that's one of the four four things I have Carolina doing. Yep. Well, it's they try to the do the same games. thing last year. Every game that the Falcons played, they try to stack the box. Arthur Smith did not care. He okay. Look at their offensive line finish. Finished top five in the NFL. They're ranked number five according to PFF. No they do player, have a good offensive line. No yeah. offensive lineman allowed more than twenty-seven pressures in the whole season. All starting five. From a passing protection standpoint, I mean, well, when they're returning the four to five starters. Well, he threw it. I think they threw it 20. What did he throw it? 28. He threw it 28 times a game. I mean, I mean, 18 times a game. I don't know why I said 28. 18 times a game. But it, like you said, he could just be a game manager. That's all you need him to be is a game manager. Pass the ball 18 to 23 times, maybe first down, first down, first down here, first down there, and have your run game take over, man. They definitely don't need Ritter to be freaking Tom Brady. They no. Don't. No. No. No, they, they you don't. Guys, and, you and guys I, might think that you guys might think this is a dumb question. What do you do with Cordero Cordero Patterson? He was kind of that hybrid guy out of the out of the backfield. The bench? Well, no. Okay. Remember, he tired. was a receiver. Cordero? No. Do you take him out of that and you put him do you line up more on the outside now? He's gonna. Yeah, he's, he's old. Yeah, now he, he, he is. Old. Ass, he is old. He's, he's thirty-two. I'm playing the running back. I honestly think he comes in if everyone gets hurt. Like if he's the only person on the field. All your linemen are hurt. Your quarterbacks are hurt. Your coaches are hurt. Then he comes in. Like yeah, <laughs> he he's not he's not coming in. He's not gonna be a thought in their in their playmaking abilities whatsoever. He's like fifteenth string. Yep, I told. I told he's you gonna so be that you have, joker you have, position. Is that you, you have, have a couple that, plays? So you have you have Drake London, Kyle Pitts, and then uh, but Zach, 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 yes. Zach, yeah, Casillas, Zach, yes. 
Yeah, and oh, one thing I forgot to totally mention about the Bucks, you guys. I meant to mention the other thing um, that I have that's going against the Bucks is that early buy. They have a week five buy. Yeah, that Ooh. is. Uh, the, I, I don't like early buys. Uh, um, um, uh, and now, and the, the Falcons one of the benefits of the week eleven buy. So I, I think yeah. if you can pull that buy between week eight, nine, ten, eleven, um, I, I think that you got the perfect scheduled buy. Um, in fact, I would love to kind of see the NFL do this thing because I, I don't like the way that the buys work. I would actually like them to, to, to do the week nine and ten. I would like week nine to be all of AFC. NFC is the only side that plays. Then you flip it. The NFC has the next week all the whole thing off. This way, no one can complain like, oh, well, our our, our bye weeks early in the season, yada, yada, yada. Stuff. You give everyone Tony. the same neutral buy. And 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 there's uh, to me, I think that works a lot better. I don't know. If let me, let me just let me call me. my let me call my buddy real quick. Let me no. call my buddy at the NFL and tell him, hey, Scott likes Tony, it, so change it. You ain't got no friends. No, <laughs> 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 oh, Tony, tell him yeah, why they uh, won't do that. Tell him why the NFL won't do that. NFL ain't trying to lose money, and have half the league on a buy. Hell no. No way, man. Hey, you gotta spread that out, no, make as much money as possible. Yeah, spread that bad boy out. King. Schedule, you think they care about right, the what players? About, what about taking a division? Just take a full division, leave that the the, the, the division itself has the same bye week. It's still it's the still same amount of teams. On, it's, still four, it's still four teams on a bye. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Well, At least a lot more suitable more for, for your yeah. fucking money that one. I can see more, I, I can see way more than the other one that you suggested on weeks nine and ten. I think, <laughs> I think, like a division. Maybe because it's only four teams. I mean, it's only sometimes, yeah, it's only, it's only four, four teams. teams. I don't think it's that much, but I, I I don't know. I can see that one. I couldn't argue against that one. So let me ask a quick question. Why all you guys? I'm gonna ask you guys this: Drake London, 2023, over under a thousand yards receiving. Under over. Wow. over. I got over. I got over. Over a thousand receiving. Do you know he was he had 866 11. yards last year? It, you think, I it's, think it's about? I think it's about 85 catches, 1,000 yards, somewhere around there. He was the number 11th ranked yeah. out of think, 130, think... 113 qualifiers in PFF. That means he was a top 10 and getting open, and he's a young stud, man. I, I kind of missed him. I should have drafted him in my dynasty. But he also did that with Kyle Pitts hurt. Yeah. Yeah, and, that's true. And he had Mariota throwing him, too. He's a little bit more experienced than Ritter. Um, but, I mean, Mariota is a lot more experienced, but he's not better. I don't think he's that much better. But even then, like he Ritter actually, years. but again, Ritter threw more yards per game than Mariota. Mariota was averaged one seventy point seven, Ritter one seventy seven. Even, I mean, it's huh. it's close, but it's it not is that much different. The ceiling's different. up for it's London. Different. I think yeah. he gets a thousand, but it's easy. a small sample size too. It's only four games yeah. versus thirteen. Okay, all right. Well, I think um, we've, we've been looking looking at real quick though. Too. Looking at it, real what quick, looking at Atlanta's schedule. Uh, you said they have the they have the easiest schedule, right, Scott? Correct. So, and and I can see it looking at their schedule. So, week one is Panthers. Their hardest stretch is weeks two, three, and four. Packers, Detroit, and Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. After that, I don't think they really have two game, two hard games back to back. I'm Texans, telling you this. Texans, I'm Washington, Saints, Bucks, Saints, and Jets. Titans. Hold on. Titans, yeah. Vikings, Cardinals. Then they have their bye. Then, yes, the Saints and Jets, that's their only other back-to-back -back hard weeks. Buccaneers after the Jets, Panthers, Colts, Bears, and then the Saints. They I told you that. They, they don't have what a lot of other teams typically have where you have that tough stretch and you have, you know, six very hard games in a five-week stretch. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, five hard games in a six-week stretch. I, I feel like to, add, to, 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 to rebuttal that, Mike, or to counter what you just said, I think that because they're so inexperienced, they're going to make mistakes, and that's why. Oh, no they're doubt. Gonna, that's they why they're going to yeah. lose games. No lose doubt. Games that they should even win. if they have an easy game. Yeah. Yes. They're, they're going to lose yeah. games they should win because of because good. of mistakes by inexperience. Yes, and I think that's that's all they have. Starting with the but if they don't if they don't make those mistakes, I mean that is I a very you. very favorable schedule. Yep. Like I said, oh, yeah, don't be surprised if this team can compete for the division. I'm saying they're going to win it, but don't be surprised week 12, 13 comes around and these guys are maybe two uh, games out. A game or two behind New Orleans, you know, and, and that division's in that division. Yeah. Don't be surprised. 
Yep. All right, guys. All right, so cool. last team obviously is going to be the Saints. Uh, hey, Tony. All four of us. <laughs> obviously, all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, obviously, all are going to have the Saints winning this division. Um, now they actually now looking at their schedule. Now they have the thirty first, so they have the easiest schedule. But looking over the schedule, I would almost argue that I actually think they have the easiest schedule, uh, yeah, just based on sure. how it's sorted out. Yeah, so they, that's what I think. Yeah. They, 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 yeah, it, it's, it's, it's play any like what you were talking about as far as the Falcons, Mike. They don't have a stretch on this schedule where I'm like, shit, they, they're, they, they got to win these games right here. They, mm-hmm. they don't. Excuse me. Um, I think they're going to be just fine. I have the Saints going 11 and six, but the only reason I have them going 11 and six is because I have. Have them go in their division. I think that they will. I think they have the best roster. I think they have the best quarterback. Uh, if Michael Thomas stays healthy, they have. I think it's a better wide receiver duo than uh, Mike Evans and Chris mm-hmm. Godwin. They have a good defense. Now, they're obviously, they can't run the ball like other teams can, but I don't think they're going to have to because they also are have arguably maybe the best defense in this division. Um, as far as the way that their uh, schedule goes, their their schedule is, is is great, is great. In fact, in fact, four of their last six games are at home, so they're not going to be doing a lot of traveling at the at the end of the year. Um, that's going to be great. Um, now, I will say this. Let, let me read off some stats to you guys before we get going, because I want to touch on Derek Carr uh, again. Um, as you can see, Tony. <laughs> Is Tony and Matt in the Raiders? They, I'm not saying they hate they hate Derek well, Carr, but I have not seen uh, uh, the most prominent, uh, uh, lovely Texas from uh, um, Tony over here in the past uh, about the car. But Carr, are argu- you arguably actually last year, uh, aside actually even with his yards, he had the worst year since his rookie year with that. Okay, so let's check this out. He had he had the he tied for the most interceptions. In his career with 14. Um, lowest completion percentage, lowest yards, and his lowest quarterback rating since his rookie year. Okay, that's what he brought to the table last year. Now, mm-hmm. I think that Carr lost a lot of confidence these last couple of years. You can just oh, see yeah. in his yep. decision making, you could see his like he had happy feet. And every time he dropped back, he had had nine years. That guy was so, yeah, he was so afraid to get hit. Um, I think he needed a a new scene. And I'm hope I do do that car turns it around. But again, as far as the quarterbacks go in this division, he is by far the most experienced. He's played in the, he has playoff experience, which is, hey, you take the Raiders to the, to the playoffs, you're someone fucking special. I don't give a shit what you say about this guy but so <laughs> so so i got the saints i got i got the saints going 11 and 6 um i don't know what uh we'll go back to you tony you, you can start this one off uh um, yeah. tell me about your hero card let's go oh god i hate car so much so i I'll, I'll say this i have them going 10 and 7 not 11 and 6 and i only reason i have them 10 and 7 because the last two games are tampa bay and falcons and then speak i hope that they're so far ahead in the game that they're just like, you know what, we might rest our players depending on what they have looking in the in the playoffs. So they might rest their players and they might lose a game, but they might not care. So that's why I have them going 10 and 7. Uh, but Mr. Derek Carr, I have never, and all of you can attest to this, I have never, ever been a Carr fan. I've always hated him. And for one simple fact, he has went to Fresno State. I hate Fresno State with a passion. And I mean, we're from you guys. We're from we're from there. So I hate him, and I never liked him. Never liked what he brought to the table, and he showed that to me when he was in the Raiders. He he, his he, the one thing you know about Derek Carr is he is his own worst enemy. He can't beat himself. So whenever he the reason he had the lowest stats last year, Scott, he tied for the most highest interceptions in 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 all his nine in his nine nine seasons. Uh, he, he throws an interception and he gets sad. He's not the type of guy that gets knocked down and gets back up. He's the guy that gets knocked down. And stays I agree up. with that. He can't get back up. It's in, yeah. It's mental. It's mental. I, he I cannot totally beat himself that. mentally. 
And that's why he's not good. He's been an average QB to me. He's not bad. I mean, he, he, he's not bad at all. But if you are going to show up to be a QB for a – to be the franchise QB for the Raiders, who you say is your team for life, and they set you up with Devontae Adams, and you, you throw for 3,500 yards – and you don't show up and do anything with that, that was your one opportunity and you failed. <laughs> Goodbye. And I was so happy when they announced he was leaving. I was happier than probably any other fan. Were you happy about him leaving or them getting Jimmy G? Oh, don't even talk about Jimmy G, bro. <laughs> I'd rather, yeah. That's for another day. We, we will get, we, <laughs> we will get into that. Yeah. Look at that. I'm, we can talk about that. I'm, just, oh, I'm just getting oh, you going a little bit I cannot bit there. wait till we can oh, talk about <laughs> Dude, I have the AFC West. I can't wait. Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Oh, that is week eight. So we're gonna. Oh boy, I can't fucking wait. That's gonna be the greatest podcast of all time when when we get to talk <laughs> about that division. When I'm fucking sure. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, um, I but can't going back to um, going back to the Saints, <laughs> going back going back to the Saints schedule. To listen to the schedule uh, going into their bye week. Okay. They now I have them losing a, a couple of, of iffy games that could go either way, but listen, Titans week one non play playoff win team last year. Panthers not team Packers non win. non playoff team now the Bucks made the playoffs but they had a losing record then they play the Pats I have the, the playoffs I, ha- I have the them Texans. losing to the Packers hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on I we're we're gonna get to that okay they don't play. A playoff caliber team until week seven when they week play seven. the Jags, and then mm-hmm. and then their next is going to be week ten against the Vikings. They go into their bye. Now the Lions didn't make the, the make the playoffs last year, but I do have the Lions as a as a playoff win or a playoff team, and that's it. That's it. That's all they play. It's for, like everyone else is not necessarily, but they play just a bunch of average. So yeah. I have them at eleven and six, but they but they could be twelve and five, just based off of who they get to play. Yeah. You know, that, that's I exactly where I have them. I have them eleven. Team. I have them eleven and six, twelve and five, right, right there. I got them at a ten and seven. Yeah, still winning the division. Ten and seven. Yeah, okay, dominating the division. No, yeah, I don't we're, know if you guys. Do you guys have your wins? We're all agreeing that they're winning the division. Yeah. Now, can they win a playoff game? How about let's talk about that. No. Can they playoff game? No. I no. mean, who are they playing? Yeah. <laughs> who so, are they playing? That's, they that's what they're playing. You have Derek Carr against well, other Well, we don't know. Yeah. I mean, no, the no. NFL season. I mean. The, the NFL season hasn't played, so we, we really don't say. Let's play. Yes, okay, Lions. Let's say they play Lions. Ooh. I think these two teams match up really well. Can the Saints? I the think Saints they could beat the Lions. Because because it would be if they now you remember week one if they were in the division they get a home game which means the Lions are on the road. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, and everyone knows New Orleans playoff time play that is a tough place to play on the road mm-hmm. when that when that stadium yeah. gets going. So if they play someone like the Lions, what do you guys think? Could we see so, a playoff win? I think they could beat they could beat the Lions. I I, sure. I think it, I think the Lions are a good guess of who they could play. Yes, it's a long ways away. But I don't think the Lions will win that division. Do you? Mm. What the? F- well, I got the Lions win that division. That division. That's so. Yeah. No, well, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm just going. Yeah, I'm just I do going, have, I'm just have going the Lions win that division. But if nah. the Lions win that, if the Lions, yeah, I'm not going to no, say. But if the Lions do win that division, then they could be playing a team like Minnesota. No, no. Now we're just in hypotheticals. The NFC is a water down. Let's just throw be a wild card team. Nobody You're not knows. Okay, let me put this way. Nobody knows. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't matter who they play against. Because I'm going to put it all in perspective of Derek Carr. Because that's that is their game manager, right? That is who they put all their money in to be their game manager. That they go to the playoffs. The first team they play, whether it's the Lions or somebody else, doesn't matter who it is. Derek Carr is going to be against another playoff caliber team. Who, if they get behind at all, and they have to do a fourth quarter comeback, I don't think he's going to be able to achieve. Because somebody's going to throw out there, Derek Carr has the most fourth quarter comebacks of any quarterback. All his fourth quarter comebacks are in games that the Raiders should not have been losing at all. So when he's playing a team that is actually playoff caliber and good, and if they're behind, he's not going to be able to beat them. 
That's why he can't. That's why he's so. That's why he can never beat the Chiefs. They just put up so many points he could never catch up. And if you and if yeah, you have a good defense and they can keep up. But if you're playing another playoff caliber team, they're not going to be some shitty team that you. I'm gonna have a fourth quarter comeback. Well. The okay, Saints, putting, putting your, the putting Saints your are the best defense he's ever had in his career. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's what I'm that's what I'm gonna get at right now. Putting putting your I understand you guys are Raiders fans. Putting that aside, what team is he better set up on? The when Saints. he was with the Raiders, or is he better set up now on the Saints? Saints. He's gonna Saints. so he's gonna be already ahead of where he that's was when great. he was on the Raiders. I've never elaborated. I haven't elaborated on it. I told Scott, you throw a car on a good team with a good defense, car can get you somewhere. He can win you a playoff game or two. I, that's mm-hmm. the way I feel. I've always shitted on Carr in his career. I, I'm the same thing with Tony. Like this guy, you asking him to come back from ten points down in the fourth quarter, he could get you there. The last two minutes, you know he's going to throw that interception inside the twenty in the red zone, yeah. cost you the game. That's what he's not going to be in that. He, he's but probably not going to be. He in won't that be. Situation. That's what no. I'm just telling you. He's not yeah. probably won't be in that situation. New Orleans defense last year. I don't know what what it ranked. What top ten? Wasn't it with Marshawn yeah. Lattimore, well, Will Smith at the end? It was a good defense. Like. I, I'd see yeah. I can see him winning the playoff game in New Orleans if if he just stays within himself, doesn't try well, to do too much. Yeah. Well, here's another thing Go about ahead. that is Car Car, Car had, had to put that uh, you know in yeah, because exactly they never had the defense really to stop anyone. So like I think he took gambles because so much pressure for the offense to score you know twenty six yeah. to thirty two points in order to win that game. He won't there have that games, pressure with the Saints. Okay, the Saints. No. Yeah, it, it, he's not no. going to have to do that with the Saints. So I don't yeah, think Saints, he'll have Saints to take gave the up same the 10, risk Saints and, gave up the and, ten least amount of points. How would you feel like you're, you're the quarterback of the Raiders? You put up thirty points and your defense gives up forty two. What the like? I got to score forty eight. It's like, come on now. He, you're doing your job. The other half of the team's not. Yeah. I don't three. I don't just <laughs> 43, whatever, you know, two touchdowns, whatever, 45. <laughs> field goal. You have to put up more than 40 points. That's that's tough to do. Every yeah, week against I, I, but I think if you're playing playoff caliber teams, even if the point discrepancy is six points, I don't know. Okay, Derek Carr, if it's a touchdown, I don't think Derek Carr can get them there. I just I don't believe in him that much. This, at all. Well, we'll you got to remember, but he's not playing against the you know. Kansas yeah, City, they, yes. you know, he doesn't have to play against Mahomes. He's not playing against Herbert. You know, he, he's not playing these in-division games that are rough. He's playing fucking yeah. a three six, quarterbacks. He's playing six, he's playing six worst, games now against the one not the great teams. teams. Well, I'll say, this, I'll say it again. I will say this again. And I said it last year when he was in the Raiders, that this is his one year to prove that he's he's great. And he didn't, right? And he he get, got Dave, Devontae Adams, and they, 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 they set him up to succeed and he just didn't succeed he he actually shit on himself but now like we're talking about he's on a team that's capable that the team the team caliber just went up right well you, you gotta remember he, last year when a renfro and waller weren't healthy neither that's so that true help. but but at the same time if his team caliber went up he doesn't have to try as hard it's basically what you're trying to say he doesn't have to try as hard he just can carry the team he's not gonna be playing from behind so much this yeah. is his year to prove that and if he can do it even remotely what he's done in the past, then he can carry them to one playoff one. But I don't think he's okay. a Super Bowl caliber. That's enough about uh, Derek Carr. Scott, yeah, let's yeah, get okay, into yeah, these yeah. pieces. Let's get into the pieces he has, Scotty. Yeah, all right. Hold on. Okay, so so look, look, look. So this is one of the things I wanted to discuss, okay? Because uh, going back to the Hunter Renfro and Darren Waller, what happens if Michael Thomas misses time? Like he's got Chris Olave, oh, yeah. he's got he's Michael still Thomas. Got Chris Olave there, yeah. Rashid Shahid. Yeah, no, he does, but this is the same situation where he only had Devonte Adams over there in Vegas to throw to. Okay, now yeah. Andy Dalton, Andy Dalton last year. Okay, in 16 games is what Andy Dalton did last year. My, now he didn't have Michael Thomas to throw to. Okay, he 66.7%, 2,871 yards. So he threw way under the amount of yards that a car did. But his TD to the interception ratio was not bad. It, it was it was a two to one ratio. He threw eighteen touchdowns, nine interceptions, and he had a ninety five point two, you know, quarterback rating. But he only had one three hundred yard game, and that was against the Falcons, who everyone put up three hundred yards against the Falcons last year. So you can't really say much about mm-hmm. that. Now Carr is more than capable of having a three hundred yard game. He's done it his whole career. So if Michael Thomas goes down, okay. Can he still be a very effective quarterback only being able to throw to Chris Olave? Foster Moreau is and Foster Moreau. 
that's a big piece. Yeah, that that's, a major piece. That, that's a piece yeah. coming from the Raiders. Yeah, you got Jawan Johnson yeah. there. Jawan Johnson you, is you, a good yeah, tight end. Too. Uh, I I did forget about that, but okay. How about this? How many games has Michael Thomas played this year? Last nine? I don't. Who we got to play the? Over how many this year? This, yeah. Oh, <laughs> nine, how many does nine. he play? Over, over, under nine. Under. I'm going to go over. I'm just going to take a gamble and just say he stays and healthy this year. I say over. He's looking for that contract. He's trying to get that last contract to yep, walk I'm up gonna into the sunset. Over. I'm going to say – Yep, I'm going to say over two. Okay, I'm going to say over two. Because these I'm guys – I feel so like we'll these see. guys – Yeah, I feel like these guys, when they're trying to get that contract, man, they'll play through anything. It doesn't matter. They yep. won't say shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then – A little but bit then of pain, little whoever bit of pain signed, to get a huge payday. Yeah. Who's then going – Whoever signs my goal – no, I'm just saying this wide receiver, Rashid Sheed, uh, to veer off from Michael Thomas. Last year's undrafted rookie. I mean, this guy came in and he did awesome, man. I think he could be a receiver now that Jarvis Landry's gone. I think he can get into the slot and man that slot. He was PFF's, <laughs> PFF football's number 38th wide receiver out of 116. Like, he, he graded out as a high wide receiver inside the slot. So they have two outside receivers in Olave and Thomas if he can stay healthy. And I think they have a little slot machine right there in Rashid Shahid to go up with those two tight ends and Jawan Johnson and, and Foster Moreau. I mean, this offense could be pretty good. Not to mention, I mean, Kamara is a shell of himself. He's not the same Alvin Kamara, but yeah. they still picked up Jamal Woods. I don't from Detroit think, I don't think he needs to be the same Kamara that he's been in years past. Dude, wait, that's, a, no. that's a huge pickup is, is Williams. Jamal, Jamal he is, Williams, yeah. He is very good. Inside the inside 10, the go- he's yep. good in short yard situations, which Kamara hey. is not. It was, Kamara's not. No, so yeah. that I think we're going to see a William, like a, how Williams and Swift were last year. Yeah. That's what I think we're going to see. I think the Saints are going to run. I think, think they're going to see a lot of Kamara. Yeah, creation now, oh, from Dennis Allen. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah, good. Kamara going to get suspended, though? Yeah. So I think – oh, hold on. Let's Let's assume he doesn't get suspended. I think, like, going back to that Swift-Williams point, I think this is a better version of Swift-Williams. And now it's Kamara-Williams. Kamara's going to get him that there, and Williams is going to punch it in. I think I think he's over 17 touchdowns that he had last year. Uh, I think Taysom Hill takes a lot, of t- a lot of touchdowns. Oh, you know what? Never no, mind. No. Yeah, Taysom Hill. Damn, forget about that guy. <laughs> but, but imagine the packages. But, you you know can what? get a Jamal he Williams be, with a Taysom Hill the inside the red zone. Yeah. Yeah. He'd be the same. Yep. I, yep. I, I changed my opinion. Down in that. Yeah, you're, 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 why you gotta hit me in the face with reality? Kamara's gonna be the between Kamara's gonna be the between the twenties guy, and Taysom Hill and Williams are gonna be the guys that are in there between the twenty and the end zone. Yeah. Well, I think they got Williams in anticipation that Kamara gets suspended. So that guy's just that's insurance. No, if he does get forget. suspended, that's insurance. Just Kamara. Yeah, I, I, I was in the hotel that he beat the shit out of that guy on camera. In New Orleans when he was there. So. Hey, I saw you run by and throw a kick in there. That was me in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, okay. You guys got anything else you guys want to touch anywhere in this division before we uh, before we call the night on this one? You guys got anything you guys want to add to it? Anything you think we forgot? Um, I think it's uh, going to be a big change I, in that division I, from I last know. year. I mean, every single team in that division last year had a losing record. Non-conference games that division combined went four and sixteen in non-division games. It's absolutely horrible. Uh, now against, have... their, against their conference, against their conference, Tampa Bay was eight and four. Panthers and Falcons were six and six, and Saints were five and seven. But they just could not beat any AFC teams last year. That's because AFC so is it, king right now. It, yeah, yeah, AFC no, is. AFC is king. But I think that division is going to be a lot different than it was last year. You're not going to mm-hmm. see a team making it and hosting a playoff game with a losing record. Yep. Well, I, how, do you, how do you guys feel about it? Real quick, I mean, I know we're just getting into football season uh, touches here, but what do you guys think about a, a team with a losing division, or I mean, a losing record hosting a game? What do you mean hosting? It's it not is, the it first is time it's happened. It won't be the last yeah. time. The NFL is not going to yeah. change it. They need it to, but they ain't going to change that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, is it? Is, but okay. So remember the what, like last it. year you had. I think last year you didn't. You have three teams from uh, 
the East from the NF- NFC East make the playoffs, right? Yeah, the Giants, Philly, and Cowboys. Yeah, and so now you have a team with a losing record that's getting to host a playoff game over a team that had a winning record, all because that division was shit. Well, here, here's what I think. Here's what I think. Okay, so you have to have a divisional winner as mm-hmm. far as um, yeah. as far this, as that goes. Right? Otherwise, there's no point in having divisions. Yeah, yeah and I, I think you should automatically get a ticket in, into the playoffs. Now, as far as the win-loss ratio goes, Mike, I think if a team is – okay, like the Bucks were 8-9, eight, eight and nine, right, last year. And if, let's say they're playing a team that goes 11-7 and seven, or 11-6, and six, I should say. I think the eleven and six team should have the opportunity to host the game. I think I think hosting, as far as that first round, I think it should go based off of record. I, I think just the division um, should get you in, should get you a guaranteed spot playoff in game. the playoffs, but it shouldn't mm-hmm. guaranteed um, hosting of a game. I think that should come down to the win loss records. So uh, Tony, go ahead and tell that to your friend too that you have on speed dial there. <laughs> <laughs> How about? I, I before we before we end up um, the broadcast, I want to just pick out a breakout player this year. He actually broke out last year, but I want to who I think will break out in this division is Olave. Dude, no, this yeah. this guy, I, Scott. What did I say last year? Nobody knew about Olave. Looked at the tape. This guy versus man and zone is elite. He's in the 98th percentile in beating man and zone. This guy is a route runner, and if coming out of college, out of Ohio State, Jackson Smith and the Jigba and Garrett Wilson. And Chris Olave, right? All on the same team. They were all interviewed last year saying who was the best receiver of the trio. And they all said really it was Chris Olave. He ran the best routes. And this guy, look at second Saints wide receiver in team history to reach over a thousand yards receiving. 72 for 1042, 14.5 yards a catch. And we all saw what Derek Carr did last year with Adams. Devontae Adams. Adams was in Green Bay wasn't used as a deep threat, and last year Adams was opened up as a deep threat. Would he have 100 reception like 1500 yards, 12 touchdowns, 10 touchdowns? Yeah. Like and that. and let's not forget, Carr can go down, and the offense is still yes. going to be okay because they do have the best. They mm-hmm. do have the best. Um, James backup Winston. quarterback. Back. I mean, yeah, yeah like it, they, like he. I don't think they would miss a beat. Well, I shouldn't no. say they wouldn't miss a beat because we're going to have interceptions galore. But as far as like from an offensive yeah. standpoint. They will still put up points. They will still They'll put still up points. They'll still move the ball. Yeah. yeah. Will still I think there. The every, only, yeah. The and only people only are going to be like, is Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas is not going to take anything away from Chris Olave. No, Nothing. I think, but I think. I, That's going to gonna help him. That's honestly going to help it'll him. Help. I think it'll it helps help. him. But, but I think, I think Chris Olave is his only, I would say, potential issue to happen is if Michael Thomas goes down. Because if he goes down, then they're going to, they'll double him. I mean, he went down last year. Last, he went. He wouldn't play Michael all last Thomas year. Thomas played three games, That's and true. Chris Olave did all that with. He was the number one receiver. I mean, yeah, besides him and Rashid Shaheed, and he did. And he did yeah, and Andy, Andy Dalton. Dalton. I so, see. If Chris true. Olave I, I, and and Derek Carr can hook up and and be where they need to be, I see. Could Chris Olave can climb 13, into the upper echelon right? of tier of yeah? I see, I can see him being a top six, seven wide receiver in the NFL. Like at the upper now echelon this, of receivers. The, the stat that does surprise me about Olave is he only had four mm-hmm. touchdowns last year. Yeah. That's, I mean, those are sticky stats, though. But, touchdowns come and yeah, go. The one thing about that, you got to remember the Saints do a lot of trickery stuff because of, of Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill. They, they do, yeah, yeah they, do a lot of, they do a lot of weird shit in the red zone. So, uh, like, for in, in that, and what that goes like, and Chris Olave is not like a real big bodied wide receiver. He's no. more of like that finesse guy. So like Michael Thomas will take over in the red zone. So he yeah. may not have the touchdowns, Mike. I, I do agree with that. It might jump up to like around six or seven, um, but they're all going to be, they're going to have to be longer yardage touchdowns just because of what, what the saints offer or what they can package together inside the red zone. They can do so yeah, many Jason, different Jason things. Hill had seven rushing touchdowns. Yeah. yeah. And he's not even a freaking running back, you know, and, and now you bring in Williams. Now you got a tank in the backfield, mm-hmm. you, you know, so you can, you can do a lot of different things. And if Michael Thomas is healthy, you have your big body re- wide receiver uh, in the red yeah. zone. So Chris Olave is not going to have off. Yeah. to score. Yeah. He's not going to, yeah, he's not going to score the touchdowns, but he'll probably be that guy that's going to give them those opportunities 
in the red zone because he's going to be the reason that they can get there. Yeah. If you give him six touchdowns, and this year I'd say he gets about 90 receptions, about 1,200 yards, six touchdowns, that's that's a top eight receiver, man, all day. Out of 32, uh, where do you yeah. think the Saints rank at the end of the season? In what, offense? Uh, just, yeah, on offense. Just in team just team-wise? Team yeah. Hmm. 10 Four, to 12. 14. Yeah, I was going to say about 12 to 15. I have, I, I have them, yeah, 13 to 15 is where I have it written down. Middle of the pack. Yeah, middle of the pack. Which is a playoff team. Well, that, if they yeah, stay great healthy. question to you on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> How far do you see them making playoffs? Well, an hour and 10 into this. No, so. no. No, no, if no. They just, do, it, if they prediction. win, it'll be one it, one win. Either one win. Either one first win, round, they get one win. Out, one win maximum. Or they get their, at, or they get their ass kicked. Or they get their ass kicked in the second round. That's what I got them. Their so, first, uh, their first Matt, one to be you, taking out the you, Niners in the playoffs. Shit! I just, right, don't, want people, make I just don't want to hear people saying that if <laughs> that's, the that's well, right. I just don't want to hear people say when Go the Saints ahead, make the it. playoffs that it's mm-hmm. because of Derek Carr. I, it's not. It will like, be. Don't Mike. Don't even start that bullshit. <laughs> Uh, that's that's another argument. <laughs> this is we're getting Both, off topic. Because his first year, he makes it more than what he did. In, oh, in, and it's because of Derek Carr. He's a playoff caliber quarterback. Get out, man. <laughs> Let it out, Tony. Ah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> go ahead, Scotty. Take us out. I'm gonna give this guy a fucking tissue box. I hate in your heart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, don't forget, Matt. I can't end the stream. You got to end it. Yeah. So with yeah, that said, take us, uh, I just want to take thank us everyone out. Yeah. for uh, sticking with. Yeah, I'll take us out. So, anyways, mm-hmm. thank you everyone for uh, jo- joining us, uh, Tony. A great, great job on your first podcast. We're, we're definitely looking forward to having you for the rest of the uh, NFL season. Um, with that said, going to be doing the AFC South. So, if you are a fan of the AFC, any of those bum ass teams besides the Jaguars. Uh, we're going to be going ahead. So, uh, with that said, we'll see everyone next week. Uh, I don't know about the same time, same day, but we'll definitely see everyone next week. Have a good night. See you. See ya.